Hey guys, it's your girl, Jen Jager, queen of Apple Motion. I don't know why I just said that. I am gonna show you how to take a still image like this one and turn it into this really cool 3D animation in Apple Motion. Now you could achieve this 3D photo effect using a third-party software like say Photo Vibrance, which is a product I just talked about on my main channel. I will link that video below. I made this really cool animation out of a still frame from my phone using Photo Vibrance. But if you're an Apple Motion user, you don't have to buy a third-party software to achieve that look. That's what we're gonna do today. I'm going to be also using Photoshop Elements in this project because I'm going to be cutting out elements of a photo and Photoshop elements or Photoshop make cutting things out in photos very easy, but you could also do all of that in Apple Motion with the masking feature um, if you wanted to. So you don't necessarily need a second software to do this project. I just find it makes it a lot easier and I imagine a lot of you have a photo editing software like Photoshop or Elements or something else. Okay, so here we are. Let's get started with Photoshop Elements first and foremost. I'm going to place my photo into my canvas here. I'm gonna scale it way up. Okay, now let's first assess what we're going to do with this photo. Having a game plan right off the bat is super important in this project. So let's look at this photo together. Um, I think what I need to do is cut out the head of this pinwheel. I'm gonna to need to cut out each of these two, so the little boy and the grandfather. I'm also gonna to wanna to cut out the little boy's arms and the grandfather's arm as well because I'm going to be having them lifting up this pinwheel higher into the air as it spins. So what I need to do is duplicate the layer so I have enough versions that I can cut out each of these elements individually. So let me count how many I need. I need the pinwheel is one, the little boy is two, his arms are three, the grandfather's arm is four, the grandfather himself is five, and then of course our basic layer, which will be the background, is six. So let me duplicate here and name each of them. All right, I've got all my layers here. The next thing I'm going to do is select them all and right click and simplify them. This will let us cut them out. I'm gonna start cutting out each of these individual layers. So let's start with pinwheel and I'm going to shut off the rest of these layers so we can see what we're doing. I wanna make sure I'm selected just on pinwheel. All right, so let's take the quick selection tool and I'm just gonna select this pinwheel by dragging my mouse cursor. Select inverse, so now I've selected everything besides the pinwheel, and hit that delete button. All right, that looks perfect. We're gonna leave that as is, and I'm gonna move on and turn on the next element, which is the grandpa arm. We're gonna cut out that arm. And again, I'm just using the quick selection tool. I'm gonna grab the stick that he's holding as well, the stem of the pinwheel. Now let's move on to the next one, and so on and so forth. Hey guys, while I'm cutting out all of these elements, I just wanna take a second to remind you to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you never miss a future upload. Okay, I've cut out all of my individual elements. Now we need to do some kind of patchwork for some of these elements, particularly if you look here at this boy's body we have separated his arms from the rest of his body, but you can see he's wearing this plaid shirt and I have to kind of make the patterns match on his shirt. So when he lifts his arm in our animation, you don't see like the remnants of his arm underneath. So to do that, I'm going to use the clone tool to copy parts of his shirt where I see the vertical plaid pattern and drop them in over his arm where the pattern is horizontal. All right, now this is a really important step. We need to paint these two characters in the pinwheel out of the background. I'm just using the clone tool here again. You can see I'm going outside the lines. That's fine, because that's gonna get cut off in our motion project, so I'm not worried about that. I'm really just mostly concerned about getting that horizon line looking right. Okay, we've done all of our photo editing work. Now we need to save every single layer isolated as a PNG file. 
So here we are in Apple Motion. The first thing we need to do is bring in all of our elements, drop them into our project pane, and we wanna make sure we've got them in the right order. So I need the pinwheel at the top, the boy's arms under that, the grandpa's arm under that, and make sure that the background here is obviously all the way at the bottom. All right, so now that we've got everything in order, the next thing we need to do is head on up to the top center of our screen and hit add camera and switch to 3D. Now we wanna reposition all of our elements um, so they're in the right spot in the frame and we're gonna be moving them back and forth on the Z axis at this point too. So let's first start with the background. Let's select it in our project pane, head on over to properties and we wanna bring this way back in the background on the Z. Let's say negative 1250 for round numbers. And then we wanna scale it up so it fills the frame and we don't see any of this messiness here at the left side of the frame. Now I'm gonna select the rest of the elements, so pinwheel, boy's arms, grandpa arm, grandpa body, boy body, and I'm going to move those center of the screen and down at the bottom. We wanna make sure we keep these in relation to each other where they belong. And now we're gonna start moving these elements on the Z axis forward instead of backwards. Let's start with that pinwheel. Let's go over to position and bring that pinwheel forward. We wanna bring the boy's arms forward as well. The boy's body we're gonna leave at a zero value on the Z position, but I am gonna slide him to the left so that his arms are better in line with where they belong. The grandpa's body I'm going to move forward on the Z position. And you can see now we've created this gap between his body and his arm. I'm gonna close that up as well. This grandpa's arm is gonna be tricky to animate, so we might make it a lot of adjustments going forward there, but for now we're kind of where we wanna be. This pinwheel I'm going to select again and reposition so it's centered over the stem where it belongs. The next thing I wanna do is start animating my elements. We're gonna start with the pinwheel first and foremost. We're gonna rotate it on the Z axis. But first we need to change our transform tool to anchor point. And you can see here that the anchor point of the pinwheel is all the way over here at the grandfather's shoulder. That's not what we want. We need the anchor point to be right here in the center of the pinwheel. So I'm just gonna grab these arrows and reposition them until this blue dot is exactly where I want it. And now we're gonna keyframe some rotation. So I'm gonna head over to my inspector window. I'm gonna make a keyframe at the zero rotation. I'm going to drag my cursor down in my timeline toward the end, add another keyframe and we're gonna spin this pinwheel. And I can see we've got this gap between our stem and the pinwheel. That's fine, I'm gonna worry about that later. For now, I just wanna get that rotation right, and that looks good to me. With these 3D photo animations, I think slower motion is better. It gives a more surreal, dramatic effect. Now that we've got the pinwheel finished, we need to move on to the next step, which is animating the boy's arms. And so first what we need to do is set the anchor point for his arms. I'm selected on his arms in the project pane. And let me move my anchor point to his shoulder joint because that's the natural point of movement. I'm going to create a keyframe on the rotation values here leaving the value at zero on the Z axis at the very beginning. And then we're gonna queue up our cursor and our timeline to match the last keyframe we made for the pinwheel in terms of rotation. I'm gonna create another keyframe on rotation here at the end, and I'm going to rotate his arms up. Now we need to go back to the pinwheel and make the position of the pinwheel match where the boy's arms end up. So I'm gonna jump to my first keyframe at the beginning of my timeline. I'm going to create a keyframe on the, for all of the position values. Then I'm going to jump to the last keyframe in our timeline. I'm going to make keyframes again at the position values, and I'm going to reposition this pinwheel so it sort of makes sense for where his arms ended up. And again, I'm not quite worried about the gap between the pinwheel and the stem quite yet. All right, so the next step is going to be getting the grandfather's arm to raise up with the boy's arms, but the tricky part is going to be this angle because look, I've got this stick here and I need to make sure it aligns with the stick in the boy's hands. 
So this is gonna be really, really tricky. So in order to help myself out here, I'm gonna create keyframes for all the properties for his arm. I'm even gonna add keyframes on the four corners here. And I'm gonna set my anchor point to his shoulder joint as well. All right, now we're gonna jump to the end of my timeline and we're gonna start trying to work this out here. I'm gonna make keyframes for all of my values again. And now let's just start adjusting and trying to make this work. Okay, I've got the arm going pretty good actually, but you can see it looks very messy between his body and the arm. What I'm gonna do is kind of cover this messiness with the grandfather's body. So I'm gonna do some keyframing here as well. So now what we're gonna do is add the camera. And so once we add a camera, it's really gonna change our perspective about how all of these layers relate to each other. So we're definitely gonna have to make some adjustments as we go here. So let's select camera in our project pane and let's make some keyframes at the very beginning of our timeline. Let's do scale and let's do position. Let's do rotation too. I'm not sure if we're gonna use that, but we might as well make the keyframe. And then of course, let's jump to the end of our timeline and create more keyframes. I'm gonna zoom in by lowering the scale value on the camera. And I'm also going to, at that end keyframe there, I'm going to raise the Y value. And so now that I do that, you can see some things happening here. First of all, I'm starting to see the grandfather's shoulder peek out. So his arm is peeking out from the rest of his body. So I'm gonna select the grandfather's body in my project pane and we're already keyframed there. Let's just make a quick adjustment. And I'm still seeing this gap between the pinwheel and the stick. I'm going to lower it. Okay, we finally got it, but everything looks right and pretty realistic. Next, we're gonna add a few other elements to really spice this up. The next thing I'm going to do is drop in this image of this grass. It's like a pot of grass that I have an image on. I'm going to put the tops of these pieces of grass in the foreground to give a little more dimension to this project. So I'm gonna bring it way forward on the Z axis and then I can bring the scale down a little bit. And you can see this grass is like very green looking. So I'm just going to apply the colorize feature and I'm just gonna make it a little more yellow to match the grass that's already going on in the photo. So next to make it look a little more realistic and part of the frame, I'm gonna add a blur to it. But first I'm going to group the grass. It's gonna give me a nicer blur if I apply the blur to the group as opposed to the actual grass itself. So now I'm selected on the group, not the grass. And I'm gonna head on over to filters blur and we're gonna choose a Gaussian blur and that just softens it up really nicely and really makes it look like it's part of our image and I love this I love putting things in the foreground when I do photos like this it just adds so much more dimension so you can see as I scrub through here how that grass is looking I love that okay last step is we're actually gonna add like some kind of like fluff blowing in the air, almost like like the little like seedlings from dandelions or something like that. So we're gonna head on over to the library and we're gonna go to particle emitters and we're gonna find snow flurry and we're gonna grab this and drop this in at the top of our project pane. Let's head on over to inspector and we're gonna change the width and height to really fill this frame. Make sure it's covering our entire canvas. And let's just make some adjustments to this emitter. Let me show you what it looks like now. I want more flurries. So let's just raise the number of columns and rows. There you have it. We really brought this stock photo to life. I think it looks pretty magical. I love this effect. If you loved it too, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so you never miss one of my uploads and I will see you again.